my understanding is that for the last several years you've had multiple opportunities to go coordinate or coach elsewhere. What finally made Ohio State uh, the pick for you? Um, you know, Ohio State uh, and, and why I came here, there's probably about 105 good reasons right now for me to talk about. But to really uh, to cut to the chase, it, it was part, you know, coming home and, and becoming or being part of something as great as Ohio State. And uh, I'm very humbled. My family's very humbled to be a part of that. When you look and, and sit down and talk offense with Ryan Day and Kevin Wilson, how similar are your ideas? What new things are you trying to bring uh, to this offense? Well, I, for me right now, it's not bringing anything except past experience, maybe similar concepts and the knowledge I have about quarterback play and, and, and offensive play in general. But for me, it's a time to learn. It's a, it's a critical time for me to develop and to learn what Ohio State does on offense. And, um, you know, that's what concerns me most. And, and there's a lot of similar concepts in football, um, you know, all together, whether it be NFL, college, uh, Big 12, Big 10. Um, there's a lot of carryover. So there's a lot of similar concepts, but there's a lot different. And that would intrigue me most about this particular position is uh, the ni dynamics of this offense and how comprehensive it is and how um, quarterback friendly this system is. And that's what I saw <clears throat> from the outside looking in. And you don't know until you start getting in the guts of it and really working it. But this is uh, exactly what I had hoped it to be as far as the friendliness of the quarterback system um, and, and how comprehensive it is and complete. Front row left, Steven. When you look at what this uh, offense, oh, I'm sorry, Steven means Cleveland.com. When you look at what this offense achieved last season, just from a sheer number standpoint, but they did lose a lot of those guys who put up those numbers. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to replace three wide receivers and a quarterback who pretty much broke records? I, I think it's really important as a coach when you're trying to develop an offense that you don't compare it necessarily one year to the next. I think you can be setting yourself up. Um, what we have to do is to take this group of guys and see where our strengths are, where our weaknesses are, where we can grow the most, and try to become the best offense that we can be and maximizing our personnel. That's what concerns us the most, not necessarily um, dwelling on losses or inefficiencies, but maybe more strengths, weaknesses, where do we need to grow the most? Where do we need to improve the most? And that comes, you know, this time of year, we're trying to figure those things out. And uh, that will progress all the way until spring and into fall camp. And Justin said that you guys have already started to look at film and things like that. What has been like, what's it been like growing a relationship with Justin Fields in the short time that you both have been here? Well, it's a process and, and uh, nowhere near um, where it needs to be. Obviously, it takes time. It takes time and it takes uh, an investment um, on both ends and, and an openness and just trying to create a dialogue. And but for me as a quarterback coach, um, I have to try to learn how the quarterbacks learn the best. And, and everybody processes information a little bit differently. Um, everybody has a different mentality. Everybody has different emotions. And so for me, it's just a, it's a real um, great opportunity to take the time in this offseason to learn all those things about each individual, not just Justin, but, but all the quarterbacks in the room and all the offensive players and all of the coaches and everybody that's involved, everybody in this building. Um, you're just trying to get to know everybody and develop those relationships. And uh, it takes a lot of time. And you can't just jump into a situation and pretend that you know everything about everybody. It takes a lot of time and, and uh, uh, investment. Uh, second row right, Bill. Great. Right. Bill Bender, Sporting News. Uh, you mentioned the quarterback friendly system. Now, obviously, I don't know how much you got to watch what Dwayne was doing with Ryan Day uh, last year, but how much did that influence you, know, you wanting to be here and, and work with the quarterbacks they have here now? Well, I think I partly answered that question earlier in the fact that when you're watching college football, we all try to study um, you know, who's, who's most productive when, you, when you're uh, trying to develop your own offense and you're, you're trying to be conscious of, of different teams and different schemes and whoever's leading the country, it seems to be the teams that you study the most. So obviously, um, we tried to peek at, at Ohio State film and, and, and look and see what they're doing, cutting edge and developmental. And, and obviously, from the outside looking in, it was very intriguing. Um, a lot of um, high efficiency offense. Um, but yet balanced 
and, and that's very intriguing anytime you're looking at an offense uh, from my mind. And, and so from the outside looking in, very intriguing. And then when you get inside it and you get to work it a little bit more and you get to have more discussions, more football discussions, you learn that what you had hoped it would be, it is. And, and uh, so this is a, is a great time for me um, to learn this offense. So I, I really hesitate to fully answer your question because I'm still learning. There's so much more football for me to learn, and I'm just trying to do my part, keep my head down, and be the best quarterback coach I can be. When Justin was on, I don't know how much you were around him during the recruiting, you know, the seven-on-seven seven and the camps and those kind of things. Did you notice that high efficiency, I guess, output in his game? Um, the film that I've looked at, I, I think he's very dynamic. And, um, you know, he hasn't practiced one snap with us, so I'm not going to give any evaluations uh, because it would be unfair for me to, to go in one particular player and, and not the other. So I'd be more than happy to answer that question as, as spring ball progresses. I hope that answers that. Front row right, Tim? Yeah, Coach, uh, Tim May, uh, dispatch free agent. Uh, bottom line is, did you, did you look at Matt Baldwin at all? Obviously, he was the uh, – Starting quarterback of a Texas 6A Division One team that went yeah. to the state finals. Uh, what do you remember about him at all from the recruiting process? Um, very accurate passer, very cerebral type guy. Um, when when we were we were in Texas quite a bit at my previous stop, and, and Lake Travis is a heck of a program, and I developed a relationship with his offensive coordinator named Michael Wall. So um, I knew how well he was coached, and I knew how efficient he was, and and how high powered that team was, and especially on offense. So very aware of him. And do you, uh, do you get the sense that everybody in the country would like to have a little bit of a Big 12 offense in their offense? And what does Big 12 offense mean to you when you hear that term? I think everybody wants to win games. I think that's the most important thing. And, and I think one of the best quotes was by Tom Brady recently, uh, you know, the most important stats wins. And everything else really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many yards you throw for. It doesn't matter how many points you score as long as you have more points than the opposition at the end of the day. And really that's what concerns us the most. Um, what does Big 12 offense mean? Um, you know, I think, I think the air raid was kind of mainstream in that conference, and it's branched off, and I think even the true air raid guys have even developed into more of an RPO system, more of tight end play. Um, you know, everything adapts and everything changes. And you get more air raid and then you get more drop eight teams. You're starting to see more zero and four eyes and, and, and not the true traditional – uh, drop seven teams, which which um, so that that complicates things, and then so the air raid had to had to kind of develop. So I think it's morphed, it's all morphed, and, and it's bled in different areas, and it's bled into the NFL. And um, so, what is Big Twelve offense? I you, I don't think you can just point and click at it. You know, I think it's it's more of a philosophy of of spreading the field and throwing the ball down down the field vertically, um, and trying to create space. Uh, more or less, but I think that that is now commonplace in in different types of the country and at different levels. Second row, third row left, Dan. Dan, from ESPN. Um, what do you? How do you work with a quarterback in flux? Does it change at all when Justin doesn't know his situation for 2019, and how would that affect sort of the depth of the room? Yeah. Can you, Can you rephrase that question, please? Sure. Um, with Justin Fields waiting on a 2019 eligibility waiver. Does that change the way that you approach the quarterback room and the depth you have? You have My job is to coach the quarterbacks, um, regardless of, of whether it's a walk-on, whether it's a scholarship player, whether it, if they're in the room, they're getting coached hard. And my job is to develop all of their talents. Um, that's what we promise our, our uh, student athletes as we're recruiting them, our prospects as we're recruiting them. Uh, that's what we tell their parents, and that's what I'm going to do. And that's what my history has proven, and our history and our philosophy is just to develop the person and the player here. And uh, we're trying to do that with, with each individual. He said he was sort of learning the offense along with you uh, a lot over the past mm -hmm. month or so. How has that process played out for you, and is it – Helpful at all to be have someone next to you who's, who's going through the same thing? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's. I, I don't know if it's helpful, but you you have to. Uh, I think be aware of that situation. You you can't pretend. You can't walk into a room and think you know everything. I mean, I'm learning the offense right with them, and it's open dialogue. And I probably ask more questions than they ask, and I'm not afraid to ask some stupid questions. So I'll ask the, the uncomfortable, stupid questions because I don't care. I, I want the information to be processed, and I want us to have good football conversations, and I want us to develop um, the best we can in that room and to have the most knowledge uh, that we can uh, when we snap the ball. 
uh, from an information processing standpoint. And that's, that's my job, and, and uh, you know, this is uh, a very unique opportunity and a great opportunity for me to develop as a, as a coach, but uh, I have a huge responsibility in developing these quarterbacks as well. Last two, last couple for Mike. Uh, front, second row left, Bill. Hi, Mike. Uh, Bill Landis from The Athletic. Uh, when you're making career decisions, uh, for you personally, how, how much do you weigh the opportunity to step into a situation where it's, it's more of a revamp of the offense as opposed to stepping into a situation where an offense is more established and you're sort of being brought into that? And how has that informed the decisions you've made throughout your career? That's a heck of a question. Um, <clears throat> that That is... Um, I think a lot of things factor into all those different types of situations. I think Coach Halfley answered it best when, when he said he decided to come here because it was great people. And that is a huge factor in everything. Our, our coaches um, getting to know Coach Day through the process, and now that I'm here and, and able to establish relationships um, with the players, you're able to see that um, the person element, the human quality is, is awesome here. The character here is great. Um, but all of those things factor into your decision um, of, of whether or not to take a, a particular job. And so it, there's a comfort, um, and you have to be also very aware of that comfort because you don't, as a coach, and as, and as any profession, and I'm sure in your profession it's the same thing, you don't want to become too comfort comfortable. You want to get out of that comfort zone in order to improve. But you also want to set yourself up for success. So I think my answer to the question that was uh, asked me earlier is, is that I just want to be part of something great. And, and coming to Ohio State is kind of a no-brainer for me, and I'm very humbled to be in this situation. When you talk to some offensive coordinators, though, they say that the, the opportunity to call the plays and, and really put your fingerprint or thumb from every call on the offense, like that's the fun part of it. And it seems like maybe you're giving up some of that to be a part of this. And I'm just wondering if that was a difficult conversation to have with yourself. Well, I think, I think you're on to it. But I don't think it's very difficult to come to Ohio State in short and to be part of this program, this tradition. Um, and to come home, for me, is a no-brainer. And last question, third row right. Rob? I'm Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. Every coach is a product of who they've coached under. Mike Gundy, we see him a certain way. What did you learn from him? What do you bring to, the, to this place that, that you picked up from him? Well, what I've tried to learn from Coach Gundy is that he, he is himself, and you have to be yourself in this profession. Um, I can't try to be Mike Gundy, and I'm damn sure not going to grow a mullet. But, <laughs> <clears throat> but um, he, he's unique. He's got his own style. And, and I think that's the most important. He's a genuine human being that cares about student athletes. That's Probably the uh, the biggest take from from Coach Gundy is how to treat people and to improve upon that every day. And um, you know, it's about it's about character. At the end of the day, recruit character, and that's what we do here. And that's why I wanted to join up with Ohio State is because there's such a common thread with that. Great, Coach. Thank you very thank much. Thank you.